Number 84. The ionic radii of the ions S2-, Cl-, and K+, are 184, 181, and 138 pm, respectively. Explain why these ions have different sizes, even though they contain the same number of electrons. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, okay, we have sulfur 2 minus, we have Cl minus 1, right? If you always see a negative or a positive by itself, it's always assumed that you have a plus or minus 1. And then we have potassium, which is a plus 1. Now they're telling us that they all have the same number of electrons. Now they're all going to have 18 electrons, so I'm just going to write that down here. 18 electrons, 18 electrons, 18 electrons. And I found that out by looking at the periodic table, right? Sulfur has 16 protons. There's a 2 minus charge. So 16 plus 2 will get me 18. Remember, negative for electrons or negative for a charge means that you gained electrons. You can't mess with the protons. You can only gain or lose electrons. And then vice versa, if you have a positive charge, you lost, you lost electrons. So in this case, chlorine had a negative one, so you had to add one to your atomic number, and the atomic number for chlorine, if you look on the periodic table, is 17 protons, so 17 plus 1 is 18, and then potassium lost one electron because it has a plus 1 charge, so this would be 19 protons if we looked on the periodic table, and then minus 1 electron gave me 18. All right, so now they're telling us that this uh, sulfur 2 minus was 184 p.m., Chlorine was 181 p.m., and then this one was 138 p.m. Why, and explain why these ions have different sizes. Well, it all comes down to nuclear charge, effective nuclear charge, right? The charge of the nucleus. So they write it as Z-E-F-F. You might see that in your textbook. This just means effective, effective nuclear charge. Fun, um, very fancy way of saying charge of the nucleus. So basically it just comes down to the number of protons because protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Neutrons have no charge. So the charge of the nucleus comes from the number of protons. So just know that for this one, your effective nuclear charge for sulfur is 16, a plus 16. So we'll just say ZEFF is 16 as opposed to 17 for chlorine. And for potassium, it's 19, the ZEFF, effective nuclear charge. All right. So seems that the sulfur one had the highest radius, right? Which means that it's the largest atom. So this one would be pretty big. Then comes chlorine. And then finally, potassium is the least. It has the least radius, so it's the smallest atom. So this comes from the difference between your nuclear charge and the amount of electrons. In this case, for sulfur, you added two more electrons. So you added two more of the same thing. You added two more electrons. And electrons are the same charge. They're both negative, right? And if you add two of the same thing, what are they going to do? Do they want to be with each other or do they want to be away from each other? They want to be away from each other. So these electrons that were added are going to become repulsive. They're going to want to repulse against each other. So become repulsive. And when electrons are tried to re repel each other, they try to go, you know, at the complete opposite ends. And if you're traveling at that, and if the electrons are, you know, traveling like that, they're going to have a, a bigger radius because they want to be as far away as possible. So that's why the more negative you are, the higher your radius, because electrons will repel each other. And if they repel, they try to stretch the atom, therefore making it bigger. So gained electrons, negative, 
Um, repel, atomic radius, AR, will increase. As opposed to losing electrons, becoming a plus one, right? Now you have more protons than electrons. In this case, you have 19 protons, right? 19 as opposed to 18 electrons. So this is the complete opposite. This is where your effective nuclear charge is higher. So what are the electrons going to want to do? They actually squeeze in. They become more attracted to the nucleus. More attracted. More attracted to nucleus. Because you have a higher effective nuclear charge over the number of electrons. So when you lose electrons, the other electrons are like, oh shoot, we let's group together more tightly towards the nucleus, pulling the atom in, and it makes it much, 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 much smaller. So that's why every time that you lose electrons, atomic radius will decrease because you have a higher effective nuclear charge, making the electrons pull together more tighter and more compact. They want to be closer to the nucleus. But that's it. So just know the difference between what happens when you gain electrons. They will repel each other. There's more of them, so therefore bigger the atom. But if you lose electrons, the electrons that are remaining will become more attracted because your effective nuclear charge is higher than the amount of electrons that you have. So the core electrons will attract more towards the nucleus. But that's it. And then this guy is in the middle. This is a negative one. You only added one electron, so it will repel, but not as much as if you added two electrons. So that's why this is in the middle of the two. All right? So that's it. Hopefully this helped. Let me know what you think. Keep studying hard. We're almost at the end of chapter three. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. Click the subscribe button if you like, but if not, I'll still be here for you guys. I'll see you guys in the next question. Bye-bye.